Hey, come here. Come here. I have a secret. I'm not wearing pants. Well, now that we got that out of the way, this can be a weird video. Uh, it's not a Fallout 76 video. Shocking. I actually wanted to do something a little different and put out some content for Stardew Valley. I'm starting to really, really love this game. More Fallout 76 content is coming, so don't panic. <coughs> don't do it. Hope you guys like this video. I have a couple more queued up. Uh, this one is specifically vanilla, no mods, nothing fun, just day one through five to get you started till you hit day 13 and get yourself some strawberries. So look out for the next one. Wastelanders is almost here. We'll talk about that later, huh? Let's jump into some Stardew Valley. Let's go! Okay, enough of that. So Stardew Valley is a super fun, slightly casual, also grindy uh, farming game. There is a lot of and I mean a lot of things hidden in this game. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to show you guys the first five days. Uh, my name is... Nar. Yeah, that works. Nar's pretty good. Uh, farm name... I don't know. Monsanto? Yeah, Monsanto. What's my favorite thing? Vaccines. I do like vaccines. Uh, this is a character builder screen. You can randomize it. You can customize it. You can also supersize it. We're going to go ahead and skip the intro, though, because uh, it's really long. All right, so here we are on our first day. Uh, you can tell that somebody has snuck into your house and left you some seeds to plant. The jokes have already all been made, so I'm not going to add to it. Uh, I am checking my TV. It's a good place to get recipes, to know what your luck's going to be for the day, as well as to see the weather. I'm just going to turn down a few settings. You can't hear the sound, but I can, and it's obnoxious, and always show tool hit locations. That's a little red circle around all the things that you can activate. So here we are, our first day on our farm. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spend the majority of the first uh, hour or two in game clearing out some spots for us to plant. Um, you have different tools that you can use. You have a scythe, you have an axe, you have a hoe, you have a watering can. Uh, basically anything you can need or uh, desire really to be a pretty decent manual living off the land farmer. Uh, I'm chopping logs and trees for wood. Wood's very important. It pretty much is used in almost everything that you can build in this game. Uh, the stones will have stone in them. They will have charcoal. Sometimes they will have uh, other materials like geodes and things too. Uh, now it's time to start planting, if you know what I mean. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm actually hoeing heh, my first uh, plot of land so I can par plant these parsnips. <laughs> plant these parsnips. I'm not cutting that out. Uh, so if you plant all of these parsnips, you will hit level one farming. Uh, I think by day four is when they're ready. Day four, day five. Um, some people don't like to plant them on their first day. I do. Other options you have are running around town and foraging and down in the forest and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. But my first day, I always plant the parsnips. Uh, as we head down towards the south of the farm, you see there's a lot of grass, a lot of trees, a lot of rocks to break, and everything you do costs energy. Uh, down in the bottom right corner of the screen there, you can see my energy bar is already low and it's only 11 a.m. Uh, the days in this game last about 15 minutes or so. Your first month, you run out of energy well before you run out of time. Uh, you can find things to forage all around you uh, from the ground that you can eat, and the things that you eat give you energy as well as health when you start working in the mines. Uh, part of the goals in the first month is just to meet all of the townspeople. The general premise is your grandfather died and left you his old dilapidated crusty farm to essentially make it your problem. Uh, instead of selling it like any normal human person would do, you quit your job at a software company, uh, put on some overalls, or in my case, some black trouser pants, and went to work. So what we did was we actually harvested uh, some horseradish off the ground 
so that way when it comes time and my help my energy starts getting too low I can actually eat it and keep going um, your first day you're just kind of collecting items and planting seeds and getting prepared for what's to come I built myself a little box that I can keep all my stuff in let me eat this little snack snack real quick and we'll head into town and see what else is there um, when you get to the bus stop area you always want to kind of check up and around here I like to collect and pick up everything that I can. Uh, my main farm, my, my completionist farm, I hold on to so many things. Uh, I'm not going to get that uh, leak in the top right corner. I might come back for it later. So as we head into the town, start meeting some more people. That's Harvey. He thinks he's a doctor. Uh, I guess technically he kind of is. Come on. Come back here. There we go. There's Marnie. She loves animals a little too much. Uh, as part of the foraging, you always want to make sure that you check the trash cans. They can have trash in them. They can have food. They can have green algae for some reason. And a lot of things that you can eat just so you can keep moving throughout the day. Uh, you do start off with 500 gold on your very first day. If you were to sell the parsnips, you would actually get 150 gold from them. Uh, right here is Pierre's general store, and that's his wife Caroline. Another part of this game is social relationships. You build social relationships with everybody in town. Uh, you get hearts, they give you special items, you can marry some of them, you can date some of them. If you have enough mods, you can date and marry all of them. Um, I'm pretty much going to blow all of my money on uh, cauliflower seeds. But you are going to want to make sure that you get one bean and one potato. As you progress into the game, one of the big quest lines is restoring the community center. And you have to collect bundles of items. You have to collect things like uh, all the forageable items from spring and super rare minerals. And you got to milk a goat and you got to do this and you got to do that. And it's a big part of the quest. So to make sure you're set up for success and that you are planting um, all of the things that are required for the community center. It's very hard to do in your first year. Oh, another thing that's really cool about this game is you can just keep playing indefinitely. The game, while it has its objectives, doesn't really end very quickly. Um, and you can play for multiple years. Dangerously Funny has uh, farms of his that he's had for technically 150 in-game years, and you can just keep going and going and going. I'm going to host some of the ground here. <laughs> I will never not giggle at that. 400 hours in this game, I will never, ever not giggle at the word hose. Uh, let me plant the cauliflower and the beans and potatoes that I got from Pierre's General Store, and we'll stash a few more things here. Stash boxes come in handy. They do cost 50 wood to build. So a lot of your time is going to be spent collecting wood and collecting stones, especially in the early game. So you can see I'm starting to feel exhausted. And if you deplete that meter, you will pass out. You will get robbed. And you will wake up the next day in your bed uh, with a less than full energy bar which also sucks part of my strategy in the first five days actually does require doing things until i pass out and transport to the next day um, in the early game especially in the first week there really aren't any penalties for passing out you don't have a lot of money you don't have any rare items you can just go and go and go and build up your skills whether it's fishing or whether it's mining whether it's foraging whether it's you know chopping things down whether it's walking up behind linus and grabbing his butt whatever you want to do it doesn't, it doesn't matter so right now we're just wandering around um, i do like to forage quite a bit uh in the first few days just to make sure I have some energy to get through uh, when we start getting into fishing. Uh, fishing is really important in this game. I find it a lot of fun. Some people hate it. I don't like planting and harvesting very early on in the game so that's why I kind of do the bare minimum to start with until I have a better energy bar. I level up in my farming which everything we plant is actually going to help quite a bit. Let's have a quick chat with these ladies here and continue on our way. One thing you also want to make sure of is when you are checking these uh, trash cans all around by the houses that the other NPCs, they don't see you. 
Uh, early on in the game, it doesn't matter too much, but you will lose hearts with them if you've gained any sort of friendship. The beach is a great spot to forage at. Uh, as you can see, it's actually a really good foraging day. I must have really high luck, which can be a factor for you as you travel through the game. Um, also on the beach, you can see up there, there's a little wiggly worm things that... Uh, they contain artifacts or books or clay, rocks, stones. They're, they're, they're special little items. Let me use the right tool. So this is the library book. Part of the history of this town is the museum lost uh, all of its artifacts and all of its library books. And so throughout the game, you find these artifacts and you find these library books and help bring it back to completion. So let me just store some of this stuff. I'm not going to... Eh, maybe we'll sell some of it. Let's see what I want to do here. Money is hard to come by early on in the game, but we're going to drop these into the bucket here, which Mayor Lewis will come by uh, every night while you're sleeping and take your stuff and sell it for you. So that's the end of day one. Let's move into day three. Um, I already leveled up my foraging. Foraging levels up from picking things up off the ground or from chopping down trees. You know, that sort of menial uh, tough guy stuff. So we are moving into the second day of spring now. And let's get up out of bed, six o'clock in the morning, and water our crops. So when you're planting crops, it's also important to know that the third day of spring, when you start the game, is a rainy day. It's free water. Let's read this. I keep finding cool stuff in my backpack. Uh, Willie actually has just told us that he has a fishing rod for us, so now we can actually head down to the beach and do what I like to do for the next couple days, which is just fish until I pass out. All right, so part of what we need to do and part of our strategy is we actually need to build another one of these storage chests and take, us, uh, take it with us uh, when we go fishing. Um, you can actually place these storage chests all around the town, wherever you want. Just don't be like me and forget where you left them because I will forget where I left them. I'll forget there's items in there. Um, and then I'll come back, you know, 10, 15 hours later and play and go, oh yeah, I left a chest there. So a chest costs exactly 50 wood. Uh, it's a craft. It's one of the very, 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 very first things you can craft. I'm gonna stash all my stuff and we're actually gonna head down to the beach so we can get our fishing rod. Uh, there's a store on the beach and that's ran by a guy named Willie. Uh, he provides you with different levels of fishing rods. You can get different types of baits. You can uh, sell fish to him if you don't want to wait overnight. Uh, so let's head south of town and uh, grab our rod and start doing some fishing. So we got a cute little cutscene of us first meeting Willie. I'm going to skip that. He gives us our first uh, bamboo rod. And we're going to go head back up into town. There's not really a lot that I want to fish at the, the ocean from right now. Some of the earlier game stuff, especially in spring, you have to get from the different lakes. Uh, there is a mountain lake, which is in the top right of the map. Uh, it's also the river. Uh, which is to the right of us right now. And then there is a pond, there's an, another lake in the in the forest area, which is south of your farm. And we're gonna get to that a little bit later. So let's trudge up here. Um, this is kind of just to show you how to get around town. It takes a little bit, especially if you've never played before, to get acclimated. Let me run around with this stuff on my head. So it's cool, you can actually get hats. And I wish that you could turn the different things uh, into hats. And you can see that I'm giving Linus a gift. So the more gifts you give people, the uh, more they'll like you. You know, kind of like real life. So Linus likes foraged things. He's homeless and sometimes very sad. But anyway, we're here to fish. I'm going to put my chest down here and go off this peninsula. And what you're aiming for is this little spot of rocks right here. You can actually, as you fish you could use your WASD keys to kind of control the direction um, until you level up your fishing the ability to catch fish is pretty hard as you can see you have to keep the fish center inside of that little green bar let me just stash some of this stuff really quick because you don't get a lot of space 
early on in the game. And I really don't need all those things necessarily in my inventory right now. So we'll pop a leak, get some energy back, and we're essentially just going to fish uh, forever until we pass out or come close to passing out on the very first day. It depends on just kind of how, how I feel like going. So catching fish is hard. You have to keep them centered inside of that little green bar. You can also get treasure chests. So if you catch that fish as well as complete the little health bar on the treasure chest, when you catch it and it pops up, it's first going to tell you what the fish actually is, which the largemouth bass worth a lot of money. And I also get a bonus little treasure chest. Uh, frozen geodes can be broken open by the blacksmith. But it's 1.30 in the morning. This is our catch uh, just for the day so far. We're actually going to level up our fishing quite a bit. Uh, like I was saying, there are penalties. These for, uh, There's not really any penalties for passing out the first couple days. So let's fill up our inventory so that way when we pass out and wake up back at home, we can just put them in our storage bin. Uh, it's about 1.30 a.m. right now. At 2 o'clock in the morning, you pass out and you cannot control it. So let's skip ahead to me reliving the best day of my life. 150, getting tired, and time for me to go to bed. So I did level up my fishing in doing that. I think uh, I actually got two levels. Yeah, I got two levels on that. It's the third day of spring. Rain is here. We don't have to water our crops, and that's pretty sweet. Um, we're going to take our whole catch from the day before and read some mail. Uh, so Joja, the Joja Corporation, which is essentially like the uh, big box store, they find me 63 gold. I don't really care that much. It was worth it to be able to catch those last couple of fish. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go fishing in a different spot. And we're going to need to make sure that we take some stuff with us. I made uh, another storage container. As you can see down there in the bottom left, I don't want to bore you with the details. I made another storage container because we're going to a completely different spot uh, down south of the map. And you're going to want to have a, a storage container with you so you can store all your sweet, awesome, super dope, lovely fish. Now what's really cool is... I have a lot of, so you can see the little badges on the fish, that's silver, gold, and iridium are actually worth more. So we're going to sell all those bad boys and make a profit, damn, we're almost up to 2k. We're going to buy a fiberglass rod, because what we're going after now is catfish. And you can only catch catfish when it's raining. Um, the easiest way to get a hold of them is in the spring. There's another way to get them, I don't exactly remember. Uh, I think it might be winter allows you to get them as well. But catfish, uh, they only pop up when it's raining uh, in the spring. So now we're actually going to go to where the best spawn for the catfish is. And that's actually going to be the lake uh, that's south of our farm. So if you walk south down out of your farm and kind of cut your way through the brush, you can get here. You can go around it through town, uh, whatever you want to do. So this is the area. That's Marnie's Ranch. That's where you can buy animals. I'm just kind of searching around to see if there's any other forageable materials. Uh, so I only have a field snack with me. Uh, it might get a little dicey, but you can also just eat fish on top of it. So there's two spots, but what we're aiming for is that big dark blob over there on the right hand side. Oh yeah, and I have bread too, sweet. So we won't completely pass out on this run, uh, but we are gonna load up our bait into our fishing thing, tackle? Technically, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to be fishing over here uh, as far as we can. You can hit it from this spot or you can also hit it from the little peninsula to the right. So you want to make sure that you're catching fish every season. Um, you never know when you're actually going to need them or when someone needs them as a gift. Uh, it's always good to have. You can see I got a little treasure chest there. Let's see if we can get it and catch the fish uh, as well. Gotta, 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 gotta. Fish. Now, I will warn you, we're here for catfish. And catfish are insanely difficult to catch your first year. I uh, got one right here. You can see it's really squirrely and it's not gonna stay. Like the game really likes to screw with you. Come on. All right, let's try again. 
Don't suck this time. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <gasps> I think we got one. Okay, we got a catfish. Oh, shit. Okay. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Damn it. Do better. All right. This is it. This is the golden cast right here. I'm tired. I'm sweaty. I just want to catch myself a catfish. Um, it is part of the community center bundle. Oh, we got one. Oh, it's squirrely. So you do have to fight with these. As you level up your fishing skill, the bar, green bar gets bigger. And so it's a little bit easier to catch these fish. Let me see if I can get this one. Oh, I think I got it. We did it. We did it. Catfish. Yeah. I knew it wasn't a total failure. Um, it is 930 at night. We fought with catfish for quite a long time. So our haul wasn't as good uh, so f as what the uh, the mountain lake was. But we did find an artifact to turn into the museum. So that's pretty dope. I'm going to head north up to my farm and drop everything off in the bin. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sell all of this yet. I don't know. Maybe. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Um, it really depends on if I want to make another bin or not. So I think I'm going to sell most of it. Uh, we did end up with a couple catfish, so we're just going to sell the duplicates and see what we get. Level 3 fishing. Level 4 fishing. Did we get 5? No, we didn't get 5. But we did get a lot of duplicates of fish, and especially we got duplicates of the catfish, so that's pretty dope because they're worth a lot of money. Alright, day 4. Just a couple more days. Uh left in this run here you know the the first five days are, are pretty important in setting the tone for the game now there's no really wrong way to play this game and i think that's why i like it so much um, you could do minimal farming you could spend most of your time fishing um, i spend a lot of time in the mines which you don't unlock until level five but eventually you can go through the mines that's where you find a lot of rare artifacts and gems but for all intents and purposes, this is a generally um, well-accepted first five days. It helps you level up your fishing really fast. It helps you level up your farming really fast. It sets you up on track for the community center. It's real good. All right, making our way back down to the ye old fishing hole. Uh, let's go grab all the rest of the stuff out of the chest that we couldn't quite take with us last night and do some more fishing. I want to really make sure that I catch all of the required fish for the community center. Um, since this is my first spring and I you know, kind of know what I'm doing, I uh, might as well do it. And I suggest that you do the same as well. Just try to catch as many fish as you can, as many different types of fish as you can. Um, I was really only missing a sunfish, so now we get to go explore the town because that was easy. Easy button. Uh, wandering around here, you always want to make sure that you're picking up anything that you possibly can, especially in these early games. Like I said, some of these things are great for health and energy. Some of them are great to just give as gifts. Uh, all the different townspeople like different things as gifts. Some of them love different things as gifts. Uh, yeah, so let's pick up this little dandelion here. Head back to the farm and drop everything off. Yeah, there we go, we got one of those. Uh, early on in the game, whenever you have duplicates of stuff, especially fish, just sell it. Uh, I like to collect, and I like to item hoard, and I like to do all that type of stuff, but it's actually more beneficial, especially like in your first month, to really just sell everything. Um, when you're fishing, keep one of everything, especially the difficult fish, like the catfish, because those are such a pain to catch. I'm going to chop down some trees, give myself some wood, uh, really just make sure that I'm starting to stock up. Stardew Valley is like, it's such a cool game. Like, I really fell in love with this game for the somewhat frantic casualness of it all. It's like, you know, you can just play this game however you want. You can play it slow, you can play it fast until you start to catch on. Uh, really, like when I first picked it up, I didn't quite understand what I was doing until almost my first year, really. 
Um, then I was like, oh, this is what you're supposed to do, and this is how you get married, and this is how you find all this cool hidden stuff. Like, there are so many layers to this game. Like a freaking ogre, because ogres are like onions, people. All right, day five. Let me check the weather real quick, see when it's going to rain. And then when we walk outside, here's Marnie with our cats. Hello, Nar. Yes, I see the cat. I see it. I see it. So Marnie brings you your first cat. I always choose to adopt it because I like to give them fun names like Mr. Business. Yep. Bob's Burgers reference, if you're keen. Uh, whenever you have pets or animals, I highly recommend that you pet them every day because at the end of year two, something special happens if you take really good care of your pets. Um, and if you're using any sort of item spawning exploits, um, Marnie will say your name more often and spawn in more items for you if you're taking good care of your pets. So I'm gonna kind of water the last of what we have. Uh, there are 15 turnips that I got and that should level me up next time I go to sleep. So let's grab another chest. It's time to get into the meat and potatoes of the game itself, which is the quest to restore the community center. For some reason, the town hasn't done anything with it and now it's up to you to help restore it. So we're gonna skip this cutscene to Mayor Lewis, the community center is up above the north part of the map and he'll give you the quest to basically unlock it and be able to rebuild it but where we're really going is the most fun place in the entire universe of this game and that is the mines yes on day five you can actually go into the mines take a trusty pickaxe and leave a chest at the very opening and we're gonna talk to uh, Patches over here. His name is Marlin. He's part of the Adventurers Guild. He's gonna give us our first sword, which sucks, but it's better than nothing. And we're gonna start exploring the mines. Um, there are 120 levels in the mines. There's quests for completing them. It's where you find rare items. It's where you find monsters. But essentially what you're doing is you're just breaking rocks until you find the ladder into the next little area. Uh, this first level is always just going to be rocks where you can collect stones. But as you get into it now, we can get copper and coal. And now we get to fight some slimes. Slimes are pretty cool. They will hurt you. They will deplete your health. They do jump at you. Uh, but eventually you start getting better and better weapons and better armor and cooler outfits. And we're just going to kind of go down as far as we can uh really you want to break open as much of this type of stuff as you can if you see boxes and barrels barrels i don't know a barrel i only know barrels where have i been my whole life um the mines are the probably one of the grindiest things about this game uh, but they're 10 times more fun than doing all of the community center uh to completion which can take a while i do not ever recommend trying to complete the community center when you first start playing this game in your first year it is possible it is very difficult to do on your own and almost impossible without item spawning or cheating or being a dirty cheater or doing cheaty things which i like to do sometimes so as you get deeper into the mine, you actually start to hit nodes of minerals. You can see there's a cluster of about six different copper nodes down there. And you always want to make sure you're picking up these raw materials and these minerals because they will help you build stuff later and craft items. Um, you can pick up armor, you can pick up weapons. You know, there's no telling what the mines are really going to give for you. So I always like to push it um, at least down to the treasure levels. You can see I got some leather boots out of this one. Uh, if I had a higher luck day, if I would have checked the fortune teller, I probably would have gotten a better item in the treasure chest or been able to find those uh, ladders a little bit more. But that's okay. The mines are fun. They're fun to grind. I do them almost every day when I'm in Stardew Valley and playing casually. And it's important to remember, like, you play this game how you want it. You want to grind mines all day? Do it. I don't care. I'm not your dad. I'm not going to stop you. You want to grind mines like a filthy, filthy mine grinder? That's all you. Um, 
I'm passing out, apparently. It's 11.40 p.m. I wasn't paying attention to my energy, but I'm going to hit those level ups. So go out there and farm your little hearts out and mine your little hearts out and fish your little hearts out and go have some fun with Stardew Valley. I'll see you guys next time.